I have been shooting a lot of 35 millimeter film lately. I did have a couple photo shoots where I just shot off about a dozen rolls, um, some Portra 400, some HP5, and I've devised what for me is the perfect workflow for scanning my film prior to doing any uh, darkroom work with them or digital um, work with them. <laughs> Oh, and one more thing. The workflow involves um, scanning the film with my Canon R5 with a macro lens on a light table. And a few people said that I was shooting the film the wrong way and that I should flip it up and shoot through the dull side. So if you wait till the end of this video, I'm gonna do a direct comparison of shooting through the base side and shooting through the emulsion side to see if there is any validity in that in a real working situation. So I'll stay till the end for that and we'll just get right into this. I did pick up um, the Veloi 360 Advance. I picked it up on the advice of somebody who made the suggestion down in the comments. And I really like the system. You can, I can do 35 millimeter film and 120 film, um, six by six, and then you can get the, the other inserts. But I like the fact that I can do them all. And so this is pretty much my go-to for scanning 35 millimeter and 120 film. Now for six by 17 and larger formats, I still use my flatbed. Um, but who knows, maybe I'll change that in the future as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is clearly gr grab the film. This is a roll of HP5. I want to start with the first frame. So I'm going to leave the leader on because it helps feed that in. But I just kind of loop this around and I try to, you know, I'm not wearing gloves, but I try to just keep my fingers on the edge, the edges so I'm not getting fingerprints all over it. Then I am going to feed this into the system and I got the, it's got a little brush on it so it kind of keeps the dust off and everything. And then on my light table, I have a, this is still the same Artograph light table I used from the last one, but I cut a black, and this is just a foam pad, like craft foam. And then, so that's gonna prevent any flare and stuff to come in. So there's just a, a hole cut in it, so it kind of masks it off. But then as I feed this in, I tend to keep the light off. Like I said, with the leader on, I can feed it right into these little grooves. The other thing I did change was I put um, a tripod head on here with a, a ball and it's got a little level on the top. So that works really nice so I don't have to um, monkey around with adjusting anything else. I can just adjust this from right here. So it's already good to go. I don't need to mess with any other levels if I don't want to. But a lot of times I do double check the lens from time to time and then I check the plane um, for this little Veloi adapter, which is another cool thing about it because it's got leveling feet on the bottom. So that's, you know, a really cool thing. All right, so I'm using a program called Smart Shooter and that um, tethers the camera to my computer and I'm able to see exactly what I'm gonna shoot on the computer and I can actually control my camera from the computer. And then I have an auto import setting in Lightroom. And if you go under File, Auto Import, enable auto import and then you go to the settings you can under the destination you can select a folder that basically lightroom watches and then it will just automatically import those images so from smart shooter i have the the raw files going into that watch folder and they automatically get imported into lightroom so like i said i really like this workflow because once i'm done scanning the film they're already they're already processed so it, it's just really efficient so let's open up smart shooter turn my camera on then i have to basically enable live view change the aperture to 7.1 iso to 100 exposure compensation i don't want to have on and i've just gone with so the the focus mode i go auto focus single the white balance i've been going to auto and then I've also been putting it in aperture priority mode. So then I'm gonna advance to the first frame. It's a little squeaky. Hit the autofocus. There we go. And the only thing about this Veloi, Veloi, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, is I wish there, were, there was a way to get it a little bit more even uh, rebate on the top and bottom because I find when I advance it through 
it it sometimes cuts one or the other off and I just wish there was a like I'm trying to figure out a way to actually make it work a little bit better but other than that I love I really do like the system a lot so again I have this this is the Canon macro 100 millimeter lens set at f 7.1 and the Canon R5 and everything is pretty much in auto mode auto white balance evaluative metering mode and ISO 100 so I'm just going to auto focus and shoot and I'm just going to advance squeak 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 auto focus and shoot <laughs> I hit auto focus every time I don't know how necessary that is it just seems to be what I want to do I'm gonna pull up a seat and then I basically go through the whole roll this way and once this gets down far enough I can just cut the film and put it in sleeves and then if it's black and white film it's ready to be contact printed if it's color film I can do a contact sheet if I want to but I sleeve it mark it and then I put it in a folder and I'll, I'll show you exactly how I do that but it's just been a really efficient way for me to get everything scanned in and then ready uh, for my next step but one thing I would have to say if you're doing this because sometimes I'll be doing this and developing film or doing this and, and doing something else what I've found is that I have to have a consistent if I walk away from this, I have to know like what frame, because I want to have exactly 36 so I can go in and name them 1 through 36 when I'm done. And if I don't have a consistent method when I, when I walk away from this and come back to it, I'll forget, did I do that one or not? And it, it becomes kind of a problem. So what I do, like I'll, I'll autofocus and shoot. I won't advance it. I'll go, if, go do what I have to do and I'm just consistent. I know when I come back, I have to advance it and shoot. If I don't have that system and I'm not consistent, I'll end up with like 37 or 38. You know, I'll have taken the same picture twice and then that completely, then that completely messes up my naming convention and you know, how I do it from there. And then I have to go back in and you know, if, if I'm really like picky and want to make sure that everything's matched up, I have to go back in and it's a problem. So just having that consistency in place has been really important. All right, so now there's at least six frames here. So now it, it's right here. I'll just take and cut this. And then I will get my for this one, I already have all the details worked out. It's This is roll four of the HP5. This one I actually shot at 400, the others I shot at 800. The date, what I did, how I developed it, and I just simply put it in. So as I go, I have them already scanned in. They're getting sleeved. It's just a really nice process. All right, then, like I said, this is already all labeled and I'm just gonna kind of look, roll four, HP 5, 400. I kind of know what that is, but now I'm gonna go over to Lightroom. This now is ready to, this is black and white film, so it's gonna stay in the dark room, uh, go on my pile to be contact printed. That's getting out of hand. All right, so then we're gonna head over to Lightroom and now my, Let's see, need sorting. That's where my files go. So then I simply go up to the top one. I select them all and if things went right and I didn't uh, misstep and actually, you know, accidentally do um, one twice and whatnot, I should end up with 36 selected. And I'm simply gonna take those up. Now these are where I have the rest of hers uh, or the rest of this shoot. So it was, I shot these on the 12th um, these are the HP5 rolls. These are the Portrait 400 rolls. So I'm going to make a new folder in the HP5. I'm going to hit Create Folder inside of HP5. And that's typically how I keep jobs in my Lightroom catalog in a folder with the date first, so 2022, then the month 02, and then 12, and that keeps everything in chronological order so I import them in the hard drive that way so this automatically is going to move them into these folders um, and I'm going to call this roll four parentheses 400 and include selected photos so it's going to just automatically drag these folders over to where I keep them 
then here it is right here and I'm gonna select them all and this is where it's important that for me anyway and how I do this that I have I start with the first one and then I end up with 36 exactly so I go over to library I rename the photos I suppose I could probably name them in the software, but it's just as easy to do it this way. And then I have a, a custom naming where it's just sequence under a, a thousand. It just automatically sequences them zero one or zero zero one zero zero two. Start number one. It's going to rename all of them. Then the next process would just be to go through and flip all the ones, select all the ones that aren't, uh, oriented right, sorry, and correct that. And then I will go through and I will do a conversion. And I pretty much, I usually do just a, a I see this was a raw conversion with, um, these were shot at 800. This is just a straight conversion of the 800 one. So I'll go through and convert them that way. And this is just a straight conversion using Negative Lab Pro. Um, this was uh, HP5 pushed 800. And then, so that's pretty much what I do. I'll convert them and I'll keep a TIFF file and then the original RAW files and I'll separate them into folders underneath this. And it's just a really nice way to organize them. Then I can, you know, when I'm making the contact sheet, I can come in and look and I can use the loop on the light table to see how sharp they are. And I can also come in here and, you know, zoom in and see how sharp they are. So it just really, really, I'm really happy with, with this workflow. Um, and so far so good, uh, I'm a little backed up on the, the contact sheets, but you know, so, uh, hopefully someone, you know, hopefully someone got a little something out of this part of it. And now I'm going to go ahead and rescan the same frame flip the film over, scan the frame, and I'm gonna just compare them. I wanna see if there's any difference. I've, I have done this in the past, but I'm gonna do it again real time and we'll, we'll just see, we'll see what it looks like. All right, so now I scanned the exact same frame uh, once through the shiny side and once through the emulsion side or the, the dull side. And because I did get um, some feedback that one might be superior to the other. Yeah, I would say uh, shooting through the, the shiny side is just gonna be easier. It's gonna be one less step in your workflow. You know, you're not gonna have to flip the image around. And it does seem that the film likes to feed a little bit better that way for me as well. But let's just look at these. So this is, I don't even know which is which, honestly. Um, but let's just look at them. Actually, wait, I, I take that back. I do know it just which because I knew which I know which way um, I shot this picture. So, but anyway, this is the exact same um, settings, the exact same light. Like I did it one right after the other in uh, in, in my dark room with the setup that I just showed you. So I, I really don't know um, if I had to. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Tell me what you think. If, if I had to pick, I might pick the right one. And I think that is the one that is shot through the emulsion side. Yeah, this was the one that I shot through the shiny side, but I don't know. The, I mean, the more I look at them, the more I'm, I, yeah, I've done this before too. And I, I, I kind of came to the conclusion that if it makes my life easier, I'm gonna go with that route because I can't really see any difference. Now I might get um, torn apart on this because there probably is some, you know, technical aspect of shooting through the dull side that would make it better. I didn't bother to do it this with the Portra 400, just because they're both kind of shiny. So maybe I'm wrong on that too. So you can tell me in the comments, you know, am I way off on this or is, does it just make more sense to through, or does it make just, or does it just make more sense to, you know, keep your life simple and shoot, um, you know, the correct orientation. Anyway, 
I can't, I can't really see any difference. There is a little tone variation. I don't know what that's all about, but all right. So that's the video guys. Like I said, leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think. Am I missing something completely on this? Or is there something in my workflow that I could be doing better? Um, otherwise I hope, I hope somebody got something out of my actual workflow and uh, I'll see you next time.